Hi everyone, this is a quick learning bias to show you how we can use images as buttons in Captivate. Uh, so what I've seen in the past, this is the problem statement. So uh, for example, I've got this uh, website here and I might want to create a link to the website from within Captivate. Now what I've seen in the past, of course, you can take a screenshot of the uh, of the screen of, of this particular example. Paste that screenshot in there. Now, if I wanted to create a button from this image, what I've done in the past is I've, I might have just put a shape on top of that button, on top of that image, like so, used as button, and then uh, change the opacity to zero. Here's the thing. I've now got two objects on the timeline and two objects on the stage, which I have to manage uh, separately or I have to maintain in the future. So ideally, it'd be great just to have one object uh, doing two things. So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn, look, the shape is uh, a button, as it says here, I've changed the opacity to zero. Uh, I'm going to change the width of the stroke to zero as well but I can actually use this image as fill of the shape. Um, and you'll see here, well, I've got the shape selected where it says fill solid. If I click on the drop down arrow and choose image fill, uh, and then I go to the fill drop down and where it says custom image, I'm gonna click on the folder and that will take me to my library. And of course, uh, it's a really good idea to um, have your library items named. So I'm just gonna quickly do that now, just show you a quick little trick. This is awesome. Say for example, this exact image right here, if I right mouse click, choose the option find in library, that'll highlight the asset in the library. And then I rename that asset and I can call it a uh, website uh, screen shot like so. Okay, so that's named. Uh, might tidy my library up here as well. So select unused items and delete. Okay, that'll make it easier. So while I've got the shape selected, go back into properties, go to fill, custom image, click on the folder, select the image, click on OK. Now from here, I can do uh, some stuff. I can always come back in here and change any uh, contrasts or whatever it might be. Uh, so that's fine, I'll just click on okay there. Um, now here's the thing, at the moment, that image is being tiled. So if I just take the tick off tiled, um, and I take the tick off stretch. Now that is showing what it looks like at full size. But if I actually go back in and click on stretch, what this means is the image will stretch as the shape is being stretched. Now the trick is this, I want the shape to be exactly the same size as the original image. So I can select the image, then at the same time, so make sure I click the image first, see how it's got the white dots around the outline, uh, around the outside, then click the shape, and using my align toolbar, and if you can't see your align toolbar, this will become your best friend. Click on the window menu, make sure you've got a tick next to align. And the second last button, resize the same size. Now, because I selected the image first, that becomes the object which dictates the size of the other shapes that you have selected. So if I click on this button right here, this shape is now exactly the same size as the image. Now that I've got the image inside the shape, I can delete the original image. And you'll notice that it still says use as button. Obviously what I want to do is I click actions here. I want to open up URL. Um, the actual URL I want to open is this one right here. So I'm just going to copy the URL from the uh, web address. And I'm just going to paste the URL in there and then press enter. Uh, and I also want to make sure that that URL opens up in a new window. So it opens up a new tab. 
And also, here's a trap for young players. We want to take the tick off continue playing project because um, most of the time, and this is entirely up to you, most of the time uh, you might have, say, another button in here, and I'll just put in another button, which I'm going to show you a little trick in a minute. And that might be the, the next button. So um, go to next slide. And that's got its own pause. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that it's not continuing to play the project. Now, here's something really cool uh, we can do. Um, because it's now a button, it's got a rollover state. So if we go and click on rollover, and you'll see that it's maintained the image fill on the rollover state. But let's try this. We can change the appearance of that image as it's being rolled over. So what we can do is we can edit the state of that image in the rollover state. So if we click on the little pencil, and let's change the contrast, oh, actually let's change the contrast, might change the sharpness, uh, maybe the brightness. Um, I'm gonna go look quite crazy here. Uh, you can go sort of grayscale. Um, click on OK. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, an outline, so say a four, um, four outline. Um, now, if I go to, and I'm just gonna add a new slide here as well, so that then that takes us to the next slide. Now, if I preview this, uh, I can just preview the next five slides, it's fine. And then if I hover over that, you'll now notice that it's the image. Um, and as I roll over, it changes appearance. Uh, so if I click once, that'll open up the, uh, the website, uh, which is great. What I also want to do here is I want to make sure I hand cursor for that button and disable click sound. Now, here's the thing. That image in the shape, the rollover of the shape, which is now a button, is all contained in one layer to make it much easier to manage in the future. So if I ever need to do anything, uh, it's all contained within the one uh, layer and um, there we go. Hopefully that has helped um, with that. Uh, just to show you what I might do is just show you another example. I want to put this arrow inside this um, button here. So I'm going to open up this PNG file, uh, right mouse click, um, copy image, and then if I go back to captivate and then paste, this is really big. So I've got the image selected. I can click fit to stage and I'm just going to make that really small. Now, what I can do here is this shape, I'm going to change the shape to become a circle. So if I now replace, right mouse click on the shape, replace smart shape, uh, circle or uh, arrow. Now, once again, what I can do um, is I can make the shape of the circle the same dimensions as the image. So I'll click the image first. Uh, so it's got the white squares around the outside, then the ellipse, and I make them the same size. So there we go, that's now the same size. Um, and that black outline isn't gonna be um, problematic in this case because the circle is gonna cut that off. So while I've got the circle selected, click on style. Uh, once again, fill image, fill custom image. Uh, and it'll be that image there, and I should have renamed my library item. Click on OK, click on OK again. Um, now, once again, what I want to do here is take tile off, stretch, um, and yeah, make sure stretch is on. And now you'll notice that if I resize that, it's now going to uh, resize accordingly. I can delete that, and the image is now contained within the shape. And I could do a couple of things once again. Um, I want to hand cursor, disable click sound. I might want to do a rollover style uh, whereby I go back in, I edit the image, change the hue. Um, that looks pretty cool. That looks pretty funky. Um, contrast, well, it's going a bit, uh, a bit crazy here. Um, but you get the idea, click on OK. And if I now uh, preview from the beginning, so preview project, just to remind us that we are using images as buttons, 
and there we go that's our nice title slide and we're now on this slide and you'll now notice that I've been able to uh, use images as buttons by filling a shape with the image itself. Uh, so the trick is to uh, bring the image in as you would um, normally, um, like so. And then you just wanna make sure that the shape that you bring in, uh, in this case, um, the oval, um, and then if I wanna make sure that's the same size so it fits nicely, I then select the image, then click on the, the shape, and then in my align toolbar, I've got resize to same size. And there you have it. And I would use as button. I would um, show the image fill. And then I would um, find the shape again. Um, obviously, I don't want to use um, a repeat of the same. I want to use a repeat of the same shape, but that's okay. Uh, and now what I could possibly do here, I could even turn that around. So the arrow is the other way. And I can actually even use the, um, the same, same image in that particular case. But hopefully you get the idea. So using images as buttons, please, we don't ever want to see transparent shapes on top of the images again. It just makes for harder maintenance further down the track as I am experiencing right now, working on a project that I've inherited uh, from someone else. So um, hopefully that's helped and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.